Now, this question is going to be quite interesting because students, this is not just going to be testing your understanding of being able to work on graph or code. You need to really understand how graphs are being plotted and the features that are going to be seen on the graph. So, let's look at this question together. So, we are told that this particular graph is showing the relation of the form y is ms squared plus nx plus r, where mn and r, they are constant. Now, using the graph, first, we have to state the scale used on both axes. So, let's start with that. The scale for this particular graph, look at this graph critically. You can see that from, let me, let me take here. Okay, let me just take here. From here to here, these are the tick boxes that are featured here on the graph. And those tick boxes is just two centimeters. So that is for the X axis. For the Y axis, we will have it like, okay, I can use here. That is for the Y axis. And that is the two centimeters for the y axis. Now, what they're asking us when they're saying that what is the scale is that what is two centimeters representing on the x axis and what is two centimeters representing on the y axis. If you look at this for x axis here on the horizontal, we can see that two centimeters is taking values from zero to two. So two centimeters is representing two units on the x axis. We can say two centimeters represents. Two units on the x axis, and this is how to just write it out, okay? And then on the y axis, we can see that the values from the set of two tick boxes is 0 to 10, okay? Is that you can measure in the positive direction is 0 to 10, or you can even take the scale downwards, it is consistent, so it is the same thing, so you can see. On the same case, two centimeters also represents ten units. Now on the y as it. so, if you are able to state that you are good and fine, and with the very first question, your marks will be good and fine. Now I will clear my board to look at the second question, finding the values of m, n, and that. Okay. So now, in this second part of the equation, this is where it gets interesting. We have to find the values of M, N, and R. But if you look at this particular curve, we see that the curve is cutting the x-axis at minus 2 and 4. And that is where we regard as the root of the equation. So that we can say x is equal to minus 2 or we can say x is equal to 4. So these two, we can work on them to reverse engineer in such a way that we can get our quadratic equation as appropriate. So, in the first case, we can so we can add 2 to both sides, so that we have x plus 2 is going to be minus 2 plus 2, which is 0. Or we can, here, yeah, we can subtract 4 from both sides, so that on the right-hand side, we have 4 minus 4, and that will be 0. Now, these two, we can combine together to say we have x plus 2 multiplying x minus 4, and that product will be 0, so that if you open the bracket, we have s square, then x multiplied by minus 4 is minus 4x, 2 multiplied by x is 2x, 2 multiplied by minus 4 is minus 8, that is 0. And if we simplify, we have x square minus 2x minus 8 is equal to 0. Now, the question is that can this be the equation that we are looking for? That is not the equation. This is because... <laughs> Student, this is where you really need to understand your quadratic graph, particularly if it's going to be a maximum, as in this case, or conversely, if it's going to be a minimum. Here, yeah, this is a maximum. You can see that it's having a maximum value at here, yeah, and that is at 9. That is the maximum value, okay? So, in that particular case, the rule of thumb is that the coefficient of s square must be negative okay so the coefficient of s square should be negative because this is a curve that has a maximum value okay since it has a va maximum value in that case you can say we multiply all through with minus one therefore our equation will be minus 1 multiplying all of this. Minus 1 times s square will be minus s square. Minus 1 times minus 2x will be plus 2x. 
minus 1 times minus 8 will be plus 8 is equal to 0. So, this is what we need to compare with the equation that we have that we have m s square plus n x plus r is equal to y. Okay, if we are doing that, we can see that readily m will be minus 1, okay, and n will be 2, and finally r will be 8. So these are the things that we need to take note of for us to be able to solve this question as appropriate and i think you should do this as an exercise for the second derivative whenever it is greater than or equal to zero what we are going to have is a minimum curve okay whereas if the second derivative if it is less than zero this is a maximum curve so students Take this particular equation that we just arrived at, okay? Take that equation, find the second derivative, put in the value of x, put in the value of y, and see what you are going to get. But here, I'm just going to confirm with you with the scientific calculator so that it will demystify whatever doubt you have on your mind. So let me check with the scientific calculator. The equation we have is this, and we'll see how that goes now. So if I have to bring in a calculator, let me just use the equation mode, which is in 5 on the mode and then we're looking at a quadratic that is of degree 2 that's corresponding to 3 now we want to look at the coefficient of s squared the coefficient of x and the constant c so we are first going to use this equation this one here which i'm saying that that cannot be the equation in this particular case so the coefficient of s square is 1 then for b that is minus 2 which is coefficient of x and then for c that is minus 8 so you can say this calculator try and solve this for us okay very good it's telling us that one of our root is 4 which is consistent with what we have and the other one is minus 2 okay but let's move further now it's saying that the mind the look at this the minimum value for this particular curve is occurring at the point where x is 1 now it's already telling us it's a minimum value and you can see here 1 is between 0 and 2 which is going here but what we're having here is what a maximum value but interestingly let's just check on if that is the point where we're having the minimum value what is that minimum value look at this it's saying that that minimum value for y is minus 9 so that means this is the point that is regarding as the minimum value and in that case the curve will be coming something like this okay so that being said, let's now look at the equation that eventually I'm postulating that this is going to be the solution to this question here, this particular equation. So we go into our calculator to say, okay, now we just want to change the values of those input that we have initially. Instead of 1 as coefficient of x squared, we now have minus 1. And then instead of minus 2, we have 2 as coefficient of x. And instead of minus 8 as c, we have 8 as c. And then let's see. Interestingly, yes, our first root is 4, good. Our second root is minus 2, and that is how it's going to be. But look at this. Now, it's telling us that the maximum value is occurring at the point where x is 1. And here, it is here that x is 1. But what is that maximum value? Interesting and good. It's saying that that maximum value is 9, which is what our graph is depicting here. So, students... You just need to know this so that you can get to the root of the question. If you stop here, if you stop here and you say that your M is 1, your N is minus 2, and your R is minus 8, you are not going to get that as a solution to this question. So, that is the technicality here, and I'm sure that so many people are going to miss it. But now you know, so that if you are facing this kind of question in your exam, you'll be good and fine. You'll get your work done and dusted, and then you'll be on the path to excellence so let's move on to our next question after this okay so in moving ahead to solve for question c we have to find the gradient of the line through p and q let's look at p and let's look at q q is quite easy because it's sitting exactly in the middle between 2 and 4 and between 10 and 0 so you can see that this is q and that will be 3 directly between 2 and 4 and then on the y axis it is directly between 0 and 10 and then that is nothing but 5 okay that's interesting but now when it comes to p hmm, now let's be careful here because we can see that yes on the x axis 
P is directly on minus 5. But look at the y axis. It's between minus 20 and minus 30. But this is minus 25. How many boxes are we seeing that are going down to P? After this, we still have 1 and we have 2. Okay, So that is minus 27. So you also need to know how to read off your graph in order to get this question particularly. I can read that P is nothing but the value for X is minus 5. The value for y is minus 27 and then q the value is on the x it is 3 and on the y it is 5 so so it is the gradient for the line through these two points that we are actually looking for and we can say that the gradient in that particular case the gradient of the line pq is generally giving us the difference in the y axis over the difference in the x axis now you can take any one as your two you can take anyone as your one you just need to be consistent okay so for me i want to take q as two because we are actually even moving from p to q from the negative to the positive as so i can say in this particular case the gradient of the line joining point p and q is going to be y2 will be 5 minus y1 is minus 27 please don't forget your negative sign okay x2 is 3 minus x1 is minus 5 so again we didn't forget that negative sign it is minus 5 so 5 minus minus 27 will become 5 plus 27 that will be 32 or let me just write it out straight for so this will be 5 plus 27 and then in the denominator it will be 3 plus 5 such that that gradient of the line joining point p and q will be 5 plus 27 that is 32 3 plus 5 that is 8 so 32 over 8 is nothing but 4 so the gradient of the line joining p and q or we can say the gradient of the line through p and q is nothing but 4 okay then we can move on to the final question here in this particular question we are asked to state the range of values of x for which y is greater than 0 so where is the region in which y is greater than 0 if we are to look at that the range of values for which y is greater than 0, this is y, and this is 0, this is 0 for y, okay? So, it is this particular place that I'm shading in green, those are the points where we have y to be greater than 0, okay? In the other case, you can see y is actually less than 0. So, we are being asked to find the range of values of x that is starting here and ending here. But there is actually a way that you need to state this particular request that they are asking us, okay? It is for which y is greater than 0. I didn't mean that they say y is greater than or equal to 0. Then we could have said it is starting from minus 2 and then it will be minus 2 less than or equal to x, which is less than or equal to 4. But that's not what we are being asked. We are just being asked for which y is greater than 0. So that range we need to put in the appropriate format to say the range is nothing but this is how you actually write it that you define it as x in such a way that minus 2 is less than x and it is less than 4 so once you can place it in this particular case your full mark is assured and you are good to go and find as appropriate